All right. Well, it's great to be back with everyone. Um, this, I think we're on session six of our multi-part series. And I'll, if you're new to this, I'll talk about what we've covered because all that's been recorded. You can get to it. But really, the goal of this set of sessions is to get you exposed or to think about what are some other things I could add into, for instance, a line of business application that would really take it to the next level for your customers, your users, or whoever is integrating with that app. Now, this one is going to be about communication. We're going to have three sessions in a row on communication, but let me walk you through where we're at, kind of where we're going, and those type of things here. So with this one, we're going to talk about something called Azure Communication Services. And if you happen to join a call way back at the beginning of the year, uh, I was on that call as well talking about this, but we're going to talk about three new things that I didn't cover in that particular call. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how would you get started with this? Like, what is it? What does it offer? Uh, those type of things. But before I go into that, let me show you sort of where are we in the roadmap of this series. So we just wrapped up our AI part of the app. And we walked through all the things you'll see here. And I want to give a quick shout out to Aicha Bosch, my colleague uh, who I love to work with. She's great. She actually covered the last two, um, which was super helpful because I was out on vacation for one of those. So I appreciate Aicha uh, stepping in to uh, cover completions. And then last week she went into what if you have your own data, documents like PDF documents, Word documents, things like that. How could you get data from those and do kind of a chat GPT style against those? So if you're interested, those are all in our uh, past recordings. Now, here's where we are today, though. We're now going to switch gears from the AI aspect into communication features. And I'll have to admit, this is one of those things I could name many apps back in my consulting days where I wish I would have had some of these features. It really would have taken some of these apps to the next level. One of those was a payroll app. And on that payroll app, the uh, there was two people that worked on it to get the payroll in. Uh, I think it was every two weeks. And what they had to do when they had discrepancies was to actually call out to the field reps and get in touch with them. Well, that meant, you know, you're in the app, you have a phone, um, you got to do your normal thing. Well, what if we could embed some of that in the app? Or what if you could just send an SMS message or an email message directly from the app? So we're going to talk about those type of things here, and we'll start off with just how do you get started with Azure Communication Services. Now, moving forward, once we get through communication, we're going to jump back into bringing organizational data into your apps, and this will be all about some different Microsoft Graph and Microsoft Graph Toolkit features. I'll cover that coming up, and I'll have some special guests, at least I hope I will, uh, for some of these sessions as well. So with that, let's talk about Azure Communication Services. If you're new to this, it's been out for quite a while now. It's actually built on top of the foundation of Teams. So when I talk about doing things like calling or integrating with audio video or things along those lines, it's all Teams based under the covers, it's same infrastructure. Now, what I'm gonna show you to start is kind of how this fits into the actual app itself. So this is the app we've been working with throughout the series, and it has, again, three main kind of pillars. It has the AI features, communication features, and organizational data. Now, for the ones we're gonna be talking about the next three sessions here, if I go to contact customer, you'll see call customer. Now, this is actually gonna allow me to make a phone call directly from the app. Now, of course, it does assume that your user has access to a microphone, as an example. I've already approved that in my browser, but normally when I first hit call here, it'll actually prompt you, usually over the left, depending on your browser, for is it okay to access the microphone? Assuming they say okay, they can make the call. Now, this is a fake number. These are the type of numbers you'll see in movies and things like that. Um, but I've hard-coded my number into this. So we're going to do a live call to me, and we'll hope it works. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, it'd be a little hard probably to see my uh, what's going on uh, on my screen here, but let me see if my phone, there we go. I don't know if you can see that. It's going to be a little small, but hey, I, I got a phone call and I could actually answer it and get lots of echo because it would literally be me talking to myself. 
But that's the type of thing you can do. Now, the other thing we're going to talk about in this series is email and SMS. So this is an example that we covered in a previous session on generative AI. And so if we were to come in and say order is delayed two days and then generate, this is actually going to go out to Azure OpenAI and generate a sample email and a sample SMS message. Now, we're going to be talking about both these, but I could actually send myself a text message. Very exciting to send yourself you know, messages. Um, but we're going to see how can we do that in the upcoming sessions. And we'll talk about the SMS and the email angle to that. All right, so from there, what I want to jump into is how would you get started with this? You know, what, what is ACS first off? Well, I want to uh, go over to a link here. In fact, let me just throw this in the chat while I'm thinking about it. And there we go. So this is what's called the ACS UI library. Now, we're not going to be using this for the next three sessions. I'm going to be talking about the phone calling, the SMS, the email. But I just want to show you what's kind of possible here. So if I come on down to the left, you're going to notice these call composites, call with chat composite, uh, call composite, chat composite, and then there's some UI components down here. Now, what this allows you to do is exactly what you see in the screen. If you have a custom app and you want to embed audio video calling into that app, either from the app to another person in the app or into a Teams meeting, you can actually do that with ACS. That's one of the things you could do. If you wanted to add chat functionality into an app, you could also do that with ACS. And the list goes on. You could add phone calls, SMS, email, and there's even a few other features. So that's some of the things you can do. And if you're interested, you can actually play with this directly in the browser. If I go to this basic example, they'll actually provide an overview of what you're going to do and even show some code. But if I go to preview and then go to set up what's called an ACS resource in the Azure portal or through the CLI, I could actually try out the audio video calling right here in the browser. It's kind of like, look, mom, no code. Pretty cool. Now, we're not going to have time to do that today because I'm going to show you some other things. But I just wanted to kind of set the foundation for what is ACS all about. All right. So let's go back. And what I want to do now is jump over to the Azure portal. Now, I've already created this little ACS demos wall in here, but if I wanted to get started, we could, of course, come up top and we could just type Azure communication or just communication. And you'll see communication services right here. Super, super easy to set this up. So if we go to this, you can see my existing one, but we can do the normal create. And then we just walk through the screen. And really, all you have to do is fill in these things here. Um, in the instance uh, of time, the worrying about time, I'm not going to worry about this aspect, but that's what you would do right here. Now, if we go back, though, to my already set up one, this is actually what you would see. So you'll notice I get an endpoint. And then if I scroll down, you're going to notice there's some really cool stuff in here, phone numbers. So I actually have a phone number set up. It's a toll-free number that could be used to send out things like SMS messages. Or if I'm making a call to a phone, where's that coming from? Well, I can have my own phone number. And so you can go in and actually set that up. I'll show you real quick. I just have a, a throwaway number here. Um, and this number, if I remember right, I think it costs about $2 a month to have one of these uh, numbers, at least mine is. Yeah, $2 a month right there. But if I hit get right here, you could actually go set up a phone number. Now, you can also go in and you can use, there's a brand new feature in Preview where normally when you send an SMS message, like I have it set up for credit cards and you know anytime a credit card uh, charge comes in, I get an SMS message. <clears throat> but for most of the banks, the number coming in is one of those just short code numbers. It's not very friendly. You can actually set up an alphanumeric one. Um, and so you could come in for, for instance and you know Contoso, is something you could set up so that when people get the text, they actually realize instantly, oh, that's from that company. So that's another new option you can do. Now, you can also come in and set up email. That's what we're going to look at a little bit later. Um, and there's even some other features. We won't have time to cover all these, but we're going to cover those main three, the phone, uh, the SMS, and the email. 
All right, so that's all you would do to get started. Now, in order to do some of this, you do need a token. All right, so let me jump over to the code and I'm gonna show you for this particular instance here where I called myself and let's just, I'm gonna do it one more time here just to show you so you can remember and then um, I have to have a missed call from that number. You probably can't see this, but uh, there we go. So there, it's calling me again. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, in fact, you know what I could do? Let me hang up and it should go to voicemail. You see if it. Okay, so anyway, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna talk over that because that'll. If you could, if you could hear that at all through the mic, that would be my number. Which I, you know, you're all my best friends, but I probably don't want to give that out publicly. Um, but to do that type of thing, and that's what we're gonna look at in the next couple of sessions, we can do the following. We can actually start a call, and then notice on the call here, I have a customer phone number. Now I hard coded mine. So I'm not going to mouse over that. I might have been in a presentation before where I accidentally moused over that and a thousand people got to see uh, it was actually my wife's phone number. Don't do that at home, folks. Didn't end well. No, we, we worked it all out. It was fine. But I did a live demo where I actually called my wife and uh, accidentally moused over it and the whole crowd saw it. But luckily, it's been fun. Um, so what this will do, though, is you can have this thing called a call agent. And the call agent can then be used to start a call. And then you have your phone number. Now, that's all I'm going to talk about right now because, uh, well, we're going to have some other sessions on this. So what I want to wrap up with is what would you do to get started with this? Like, where would you go? Well, of course, you can go to the docs and you could read about Azure Communication Services. In fact, let me just do that real quick. Let's go to learn. And we'll just type Azure Communication Services. I, I do want to highlight one thing here. It is really, really easy to get started with this. So if you go down to the left, you'll see fundamentals, but you know, keep on scrolling to the quick starts. And notice on the quick starts, there's SMS. Shows you how to get a phone number. I'm going to be walking you through that. Here's phone calling. And there's a, quite a few you'll see on this, multiple languages, all that fun stuff. I'm going to be showing TypeScript, but you'll see you can do it in all kinds of languages if you wanted to add phone calling into an app. But if we scroll on down here, once we get past some of the token stuff, um, they'll talk about how you set up a connection string. And so one of the things you'll be doing with ACS is if we go back into our uh, keys here, you'll notice I have a connection string. And if you work with much in Azure or other services across Microsoft Cloud, you're pretty used to this, right? Well, that's something that would come into play, but when you're doing this from the client side, depending on the feature you're doing, you probably don't wanna share that to the client. In fact, this app is a JavaScript app, TypeScript app. Don't wanna share a connection string there, right? So for some features, you'll make an API on the server side, and of course, that's where you'll get access to the connection string. Now for the phone calling, there's a different way we can do it though. And uh, I'm gonna save that for one of the upcoming sessions. So with that, uh, I hope that gives you an idea about what we're gonna be talking about in these next few sessions with Azure Communication Services. If you're interested, you can check out this tutorial that we have. This not only walks you through what the communication features are, but you'll notice up here on the left, uh, it also has all the AI features. So we'll walk you through everything from setting up the uh, model to using natural language to SQL, and we'll talk about the gotchas there, uh, generating completions, and even bringing your own data, your own documents into that. And then of course, we're now focused on these three areas here. Next session will be on making a phone call, and we'll, talk, we'll dive more into that code and see how that works. So if you're interested, you can either scan the code here if you'd like, or check out this link down here at the bottom. That'll take you to the tutorial. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Vesa, but uh, we'll see you next week. We'll talk a little more detail about the phone calling feature. Mm -hmm.